I've been getting a lot of questions and emails regarding the new coins listing spot. So I want to make this quick video to answer some of those questions. So the first question is that I just see the socket has been opened message in the log and I don't know if the bot is running. So yeah, the bot is running. In fact, I released a newer version of the bot just now, which includes a lot of additional logs and it clearly indicates what the bot is doing at each and every step so that you have more visibility. So let me quickly run the latest version of the bot and show you how the logs look like. As you can see, it does tell you that the bot is running and you see a bunch of other logs which I'll discuss later in this video. But yeah, it does have a lot of additional logging. Moving on to the next question. Uh, so how do I know if the bot is configured correctly? So as you know, this bot requires a lot of configuration, right? You need to enter the API keys, secret key, the trade size and profit and there are a lot of things that can go wrong and even if one thing is not configured correctly you might miss out on a trade that only happens once or twice a week so it's very important for you to know upfront if everything is co configured correctly so what i did in the latest version of the bot is i included a bunch of validations that tell you if something is not right beforehand so that you can fix it and not miss out on the trades let me quickly show you what these validations are. So it checks whether your API key is correctly entered, it's whether it's of right length and whether it has access or not. And it also verifies that the trade size and profit, everything is entered correctly. So if I run this bot, you know that the API key that I entered is invalid, right? So it will tell you that it's invalid. You see the API key should be an alphanumeric string of 64 characters. So you know, and, and the bot is terminated because it cannot run the, with this configuration. So let me paste my API keys and be right back. As you can see, I entered my API keys. I'm going to delete these keys immediately after making the video. I thought of a way to, you know, hide the keys and make the video, but I won't be able to explain it properly. So I decided I'll just create a new key, make the video and then just delete it. Now that I copied my API keys, let me run it and show you what happens. It, it gave a new error that the keys are not authorized. Uh, it, there could be any reason for this. It, it's either the uh, keys are invalid or they don't have sufficient access or I have an IP address restriction in the Binance key configuration. So this is how my keys are configured on the exchange. So you can see that I have not enabled spot and margin trading. I need to enable this because the bot has to place buy and sell orders. So let me enable this. Okay, now that I enabled access, let me run it again. Now you do not get any error, right? So the bot is running and, uh, and you see all the logs. The bot is waiting for a new coin to be listed in the USDT market. And yeah, it, it did all the validations are successful. Moving on to the third question. Uh, yeah, the bot has not traded in the last two days. So keep in mind that this bot only trades when a new coin is listed in the USDT market. So if no new coin is listed, it will not take any trades. To check whether any new coin is listed, I added this check.js script in, in the current version of the program where you can check if any new coins are listed in the last five n, n days. So in line number three, you can, if I change it to six, it will check for the last six days. If I change it to 10, the script will check for the last 10 days. So let me check if any new coins are listed in the last 10 days. Uh, check.js. It takes a minute or two to run. So as you can see, these three coins are listed in the last 10 days and you can see the timestamp as to when they are listed. So this script ha comes in handy. So if you do see any new coins here and the bot did not take any trades, then you know for sure that you missed out on trades. And if you don't see anything here, then you know that no new coins are listed. So the bot did not take any trades because no new coins are there. So you, you didn't miss out on anything. Moving on to question number four. Uh, so a new coin is detected, but the buy order failed. So again, this could happen due to many reasons. So your API keys may not have access or they're not configured correctly. So these are already captured in the validation script that I just explained. So for any of those reasons, you will know up beforehand and you can, and it's very likely that you won't run into this issue. There is however, one case where this can happen. And let me explain that in detail. So if you set your trade size as your entire wallet balance, then this can result in order failure. So uh, let me explain why this happens. So let's say your balance is 100 US dollars 
and you set your trade size as your entire wallet balance as in 100 US dollars and let's say a new coin got listed I'm going to call it some random XYZ USDT and when it's listed let's say the price is $10 okay whenever you place a buy order you have to specify that in base asset and not quote asset so what my what i mean by that is when you place a buy order you cannot just tell that i want to buy a coin with worth of hundred dollars you have to say i need to buy 10 coins or 20 coins so in this case if it's listed at ten dollars and you have your trade size as hundred us dollars then you have to buy 10 coins right yes so 10 coins and then you place a buy order for 10 coins the issue here is that when a coin is newly listed it's pretty volatile so by the time the coin is listed and you do this calculation and you know by the time you place your buy order the coin is extremely volatile this these things can take one or two milliseconds but by this time if the coin is extremely volatile then the price could be somewhere else right so let's say the pr price jumped from ten dollars to let's say twelve dollars then if you want to buy ten coins at twelve dollars worth you need hundred and twenty dollars right but you only have your balance as hundred dollars so because of insufficient balance then your order fails to overcome this issue you should not set your trade size as your entire wallet balance so let's say if your trade size was just uh, 50 us dollars okay then similarly instead of 10 coins you would end up buying five coins right and if the price has again increased to $12 then you need $60 right 5 coins at $12 price is $60 so even though the price increased you were still able to buy the coins because your balance is $100 you still have some room for the price to move in upward direction so this is why it's very important to not set your trade size as your entire wallet balance I would suggest you to keep it somewhere between 50% to 60% to allow maximum flexibility for the price to move Let's move on to the final question. The buy order is successful, but the sell OCO order failed. So as you know, this bot has two sell conditions, right? You can either exit with a regular sell order at a fixed percentage, or you can exit with an OCO order where you can specify the stop loss and a sell order. So this issue occurs when you exit with an OCO order. And this happens when the current price of the coin is below the stop loss price that was calculated based on the configuration and again this can happen if your stop loss is too close or too tight so i suggest you to put a stop loss of over five percent to avoid running into this issue i did include a validation for this so if i put a stop loss of let's say three percent okay and if i run the bot The bot is going to give me a warning that the stop loss is less than 5% and it can result in OCO order failure. So it's just a warning message. It doesn't stop you from running the bot. As I mentioned earlier, uh, you can download the latest version of the bot using the same link. And I'll also leave it in the description box.